Here I've got a nice problem from the 1978 issue of Crux Mathematicorum. So our goal is to show that for all integers z, the following polynomial expression is composite. So that means it's never prime. So the polynomial in question is n to the fourth minus 20n squared plus 4. And some motivation behind the writing for this problem. I think maybe the first motivating piece is this thing called Dirichlet's theorem, which is pretty hard to prove, although I've proved several special cases of it on the channel if you want to find those. And that says for all relatively prime natural numbers a and b, there are infinitely many primes of the form a n plus b. So if I remember correctly, I've got videos for like primes of the form 4n plus 1, 4n plus 3, 3n plus 1, and maybe some others. So this is a well-known result. There are infinitely many primes that have this linear form. That being said, it is conjectured, although not proven, that there are infinite, infinitely many primes with nonlinear forms. Like this one right here, n factorial plus 1. It is not known if there are infinitely many primes of this form or only finitely many primes of this form. So this is kind of built out of these two ideas. So in the linear case, we always have infinitely many primes, although over here in the polynomial case, there is a possibility that we don't get any primes. In other words, we always get a composite. Okay, so now that we've motivated this problem a little bit, let's maybe look at the solution. So now that we've looked at some motivation, let's jump into the solution. So let's say our first case is the case when n is even. And I'd like to point out very, very quickly that this case only allows for a certain prime as the output as any sort of possibility at all. And that's because if n is even, then that means n to the fourth is even, and thus n to the fourth minus 20n squared plus 4 is also even because it's a sum of even numbers. But there's only a single even prime, and that's the number 2. So that means we have n to the fourth minus 20n squared plus 4 is equal to 2. This is the only thing that could go wrong. So let's write that here. So could go wrong. So we want to show that this thing is always composite. So we want to show that this equation is impossible. But notice that we can rewrite this pretty easily as n to the fourth minus 20n squared and then plus 2 equals 0, which is a standard quadratic equation in the variable n squared. So you can solve this for n squared and you'll get the following solution. So it looks like this. It'll be 400 plus minus 6 times the square root of 11 over 2. So that's just using the quadratic formula. But notice if n squared is equal to this crazy object right here, then that means that n is not an integer. Because if n is an integer, n squared is also an integer. But this is clearly not an integer. So here we have that n is not an integer, which tells us that this guy right here has no solution. In other words, we can never get the even prime out of this case, which means if n is even, our object, n to the fourth minus 20n squared plus 4, is composite. And I think that's probably sufficient for this first case when n is even, so let's move on to the second case. So that second case will be when n is odd. So if n is odd, that, I, that means I can write it as 2m plus 1, where m is some integer. So it's one more than an even number. But if n is 2m plus 1, then that makes n squared equal to 4m squared plus 4m plus 1, just by squaring the binomial. And then we can calculate n to the fourth as 16m to the fourth plus 32m cubed plus 24m squared. And then we'll have plus 8m plus 1. Great. And so that's just from multiplying n squared times n squared and then collecting all the terms. So it's a bit of a pain, but, you know, it's doable. 
Okay, now we can take our object, which is n to the fourth minus 20n squared plus four, and combine all of the like terms. So if we do that, we'll get 16m to the fourth plus 32m cubed. And then next will be minus 56m squared, and then minus 72m, and then minus 15. Now looking at this, it's not super clear if we can factor it or not immediately. And in fact, if I was just given this, I would never really try to factor it. But since we look over here at the problem, and the goal of the problem is to show that this is composite, then that means that this must factor. And furthermore, since this is like a problem in sort of like a contest problem solving type setting, the factorization should not be too hard to find. So you can start by guessing the factorization and then filling in the details. So if I were to start guessing the factorization, I would think, oh, 16 here, that's just 4 squared. So probably this factors as 4m squared, some center term, and then some constant term, and then my other polynomial is 4m squared, some center term, and some constant term. Next, I go over, go over here and look at 15. I have negative 15. The kind of best way to factor 15 would be as 3 times 5. One of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, so I would maybe try a plus 3 here and a minus 5 here. And of course, if you go down the wrong route, you can just correct yourself by trying one of the other choices later. And then maybe you could do something like add AM here and BM here, multiply it all out and get a system of equations. But what you'll end up finding is that you need 12m in this first term, and you need minus 4m in this second term. So we've successfully factored our thing into two objects. Does that mean it's composite? Not yet. Because this object could still be prime if one of these was equal to 1 or negative 1. So that's what we need to do now. So try to solve 4m squared plus 12m plus 3 equals plus minus 1. And 4m squared minus 4m minus 5 equals plus minus 1. And what you'll see trying to solve those, and those are easy to solve with the quadratic formula, so I won't work those out, is that you get a solution for each of these which is not an integer. But we started up here assuming that this was an integer. So what does that mean? That means these guys are never equal to 1, which means we have indeed factored this non-trivially. What I mean by non-trivially is as some number which is not equal to one times another number which is not equal to one, making this thing right here composite. But that covers our second case. The first case was when n was even, which means we have established that this object right here is always composite. And that's a good place to stop.